Welcome to Austin Grove Baptist Church's uh, Wednesday night service. Uh, this will be the service prior to Mother's Day, and we uh, kind of wanted to uh, just reflect back a little bit about uh, our mothers. Uh, as and, and uh, we have a few rose bushes, and we wanted to uh, kind of uh, film that and see the beauty of it here. I can remember Mr. Arthur and Claire Davis uh, having such pretty roses and. Uh, 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 he, he really, him and her got uh, us involved with roses a number of years ago and, uh, uh, and we have enjoyed them and Cindy's mom enjoyed them for so many years and uh, they're especially pretty this year. I think they're uh, just really showing out with the beautiful blooms and so forth. So let me encourage you to, uh, even though Mother, Mother's Day is going to be quite different than what it uh, has been in the past, let me encourage you to be sure that you remember your mom. I know that some of your moms, are, uh, as well as mine, is in heaven now. Uh, but uh, to those that your mother is, uh, uh, you're able to either call your mother or to text her or to, uh, uh, to FaceTime them, uh, please be sure that you recognize them and let them know how much you appreciate them and uh, what they mean to our families and uh, so forth there. So, uh, uh, so just enjoy the, uh, the roses and the color and all this is uh, uh, that our Heavenly Father has created so that we might enjoy uh, His beautiful creation. Uh, last week we started in uh, 1 Timothy and that's where we're going to be here this day. Uh, and uh, I'll give you just a, a, a moment to turn if you'd like to turn. Uh, uh, to that passage here, and I'll be reading out of King James here, uh, uh, here uh, today. Uh, I was trying to reflect on a few things on, um, about my mom. Uh, I wish that we could, uh, uh, one more time, uh, have uh, an opportunity to be together, and I know that time's going to come uh, one day, but uh, I can remember my mom. There are certain uh, things that happen in, uh, in, uh, in my life, and uh, that will trigger a memory of going back to my mom. I can remember her, uh, I, I was a pretty finicky eater uh, during that time uh, when I was in the first grade. And I can remember mom getting up and fixing lunch. And uh, I can remember anytime I have a sausage sandwich or a biscuit, uh, I, it reflects back uh, to remembering mom. Uh, for the number of years, I. I, I uh, had the privilege of being able to go down and to mow mom and dad's uh, yard and I still remember to this day seeing mom not able to get out and do very much in her later years uh, but seeing her uh, uh, kind of make her way back to the back door as I was mowing the backyard and just standing there watching me uh, round after round and then when I'd go to the front I'd look up toward the front door and uh, lo and behold there she would be. Uh, I'd love to have those days back, but uh, one thing, time does not wait upon us. That's why that it's so important that we uh, speak to one another and uh, say what we need to say to our parents, uh, but to others. Uh, let the love of Christ be at the, fore, at the very forefront of our, of our lives. And uh, uh, so please recognize uh, your parents uh, this particular uh, upcoming weekend uh, uh, because... Uh, it's a very special thing that they've done for you and bringing you up and uh, we are the individuals and uh, contrary to what we think, uh, uh, we, uh, so many times we're, uh, we are products of our parents and uh, we say, well, I'm not going to be like my mom or dad. Uh, I still catch myself from time to time uh, uh, that uh, I realize I'm doing it exactly the way mom or dad uh, did it. Uh, so uh, uh, thank them, uh, uh, show your appreciation to them uh, this coming weekend here in a very special way, even, even at a very diff diff difficult time and a different time. I'm going to be reading then out of, out of 1 Timothy, the first chapter, and we're going to start reading in verse 12. Uh, if you would uh, follow along with me, uh, where the scripture records, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. I think so many times of Cindy and I, and, and uh, we were uh, high school sweethearts, and uh, I met in high school, uh, dated, 
and uh, married uh, and uh, all these years knowing the full well that uh, we were going to be in the ministry and it's God that has enabled us it's in, in every, uh, whether your ministry or what, uh, whatever profession you might be in, uh, God has, is the giver of all things, the gifts and the talents and the abilities that all of us possess, they're God-given, they're God-initiated. See, the scripture over and over reminds us that God knew us even before we were born, while we were yet in our mother's womb. And uh, here Paul is writing to young Timothy, and he's wanting Timothy to appreciate all the things that have been going on in his life. And, uh, and Paul saying uh, that God counted him faithful, putting uh, him into the ministry. Now that wasn't always. Paul was, Paul was uh, uh, certainly indeed the chiefest among sinners. Uh, he was one um, individual that was feared. Uh, he would hold the garments of those that would stone young Stephen uh, without uh, any remorse. Later that remorse and regret would come. Look with me at verse 13. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor. And Paul's admitting his sin. He's telling others of his sinful nature. And he says he was injurious. And he did. He hurt many people and even took many, many people's lives. And he said, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. He said, God extended mercy and care and concern to me, and for that I'm grateful. And verse 14 says, And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Oh, to have that abundancy of God's love and His care and God's concern. What a blessing it is to know Jesus Christ. What a blessing it is to follow the Lord and to hear Him and to allow our faith to be one that is not one that is stalled in its growth, but one that is growing in our love and devotion uh, to Him. Verse 15 records these words. This is a faithful saying, and it's worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and this is Paul saying, uh, this is something that we're to be so grateful for, and to never ever forget what Christ came here to do, and he accomplished that, as well as more in each of our lives to save us. And then Paul would end that in talking to Timothy in verse 15, he said, of whom I am chief. I mentioned a little bit earlier, Paul said, I'm chiefest of sinners. And Paul really believed that and he knew that. And he, and he acknowledged that. One of the things that Christ requires of all of us is to open up our hearts and our souls and our lives to him and ask him for forgiveness. And if you're listening to my voice from wherever you're at and you're listening to my voice, let me encourage you. Open, open up your heart and your life to him. Ask God to ask Christ to forgive us, forgive you your sins. I'll promise you he'll do just he'll do that very thing. And he will come in and be part and, and, and be your life uh, for all of eternity. Verse 16 records these words. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy. And Paul said, I needed mercy. I needed the mercy that can only come from God. I did not need the mercy that the world gives because the world, the mercy that the world gives certainly indeed is not adequate by no shape or means. And he said here as he continued on, and he said, uh, said here, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Paul was encouraging young Timothy and all who would read this letter even today uh, to remember the events that Christ uh, uh, had said and the things that he had done in this life to give us a pattern of what's going on. One of the things, every time I say that word pattern, I think about my mom uh, with the uh, patchwork quilts. I can remember the small pieces of fabric that was there, and she'd cut those things out and hand stitch those in. We have a number of those quilts, wouldn't take anything for those, and things and, and those that my grandmother made, uh, so precious to us, still use them to this day. 
Every time I touch one, I think of mom. I think of my grandmother. I think of the things that are there. And this is what Paul was saying to young Timothy. Christ has given you and I the pattern in which to base your life and my life. And if we'll base our life upon what Christ has shown us and what Christ has done for us, oh, what a blessing and what joy that you and I could never imagine can come into your life and in my life. Let him be the pattern that we need for our lives. Let our lives be shaped and molded in Christ's image, in Christ's direction, by Christ's calling. So important. And he says this will carry us not only through this life, but into everlasting life. Folks, what a joy that is. And Paul was writing to, to a young preacher lad, young Timothy, and he was trying to encourage him to look upon these things. Put your faith and your trust in Christ. Pattern your life after Christ. Don't pattern it after my life. I stood in need of the mercy that only God could provide for me. And all of us, we need that mercy. We need that care and concern. Verse 17 records these words. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. In fact, what Paul knew, he knew there's only one God. Oh, there are a lot of images and a lot of things that people will bow down to and that people will hold in such high regard. But Paul knew there's only one God. Young Timothy knew. He was taught by his grandmother and, uh, and, and by his mother of how precious Christ is and what Christ has done for us, nothing, nothing in this world could ever do what Christ has done for us. And he said, he called him the only wise God. He's the only God. And then Paul ended this particular phrase of this letter to young Timothy with these words. May we give God honor, be honor and glory forever and ever to the Lord. And he ended this, this section with amen. I hope that uh, this day finds each of you well. I know that we're moving closer uh, to being able to assemble in larger groups. Uh, we're not sure how quickly we're going to be able to get back into our sanctuaries and be together once again physically. Uh, but uh, uh, we're getting there. Uh, we, uh, please help us to pray for all those that are in the medical field, those that are uh, our emergency personnel, from the firemen, the police officers, to the EMS, to the nurses, to the others that, that are doing the necessary task in our hospitals and in our doctor's offices. Please pray for them. Pray for those that, that their families uh, have been affected by uh, this virus. Uh, pray for those that loved ones have gone on to be with the Lord. Uh, certainly, indeed, our Heavenly Father is always there to give us strength. And we are going to get through this. We're on our way. It's just going to be a long, little bit longer. And thank you for spending some time with us here in the middle of the week uh, to uh, worship our Heavenly Father. These words that we have read, they're words that have meaning that will help us to base our life and our existence upon Him, but more importantly, these are words that will not only carry us all the days on this earth, but these words are eternal, and these words bring eternal life to us, and these words are the changing. They will change our, our destiny. They'll change where we're going to spend eternity. No Christ. Pray with me, if you would, please. Heavenly Father, as we uh, just are able, Father, to reflect back uh, on some days in the past of uh, when we were uh, much younger and smaller, the things our parents have done for us, some of the grandparents, the influence that they have had, the patterns that they have that they set before us, and that those that. Uh, uh, that even today our parents are patterning they, uh, for their children. And Lord, I pray that we're, we're doing it in a way in which that's so pleasing in your eyes. So Lord, we ask that you would hear our prayers, hear the concerns that we have for all those that are serving us. 
uh, that are leaving their homes and the families and that are uh, taking the risk and they're doing so uh, to help us. Lord, thank you for them. And I pray for every, every person that is trying to help us. Lord, uh, be with them. And Lord, wrap that, uh, uh, wrap us, uh, your arms around us and put that hedge of protection around us and keep us safe. And uh, Lord, may we not neglect to say thank you to our mothers. And if our mothers are already in heaven, may we just uh, pause and think about them, share a memory, share a good time, uh, share something that mom did for you and uh, how it's impacted your life. Just as surely as moms and dads impact our lives, God's Word does the very same thing. Lord, I thank you for your Word and the truth of it. So Lord, take care of us. Keep us safe until we're going to be able to once again to meet again online and, uh, and hopefully soon we'll be able to be back together uh, as a congregation. So lead God and direct us and keep us safe and keep us well. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. Have a wonderful, safe week.